Hey guys, welcome back to today's video. Today is Thursday, October 13th, 2022, and today we are going to be talking about the Ohio Senate race between J.D. Vance and Representative Tim Ryan. Now, the Ohio Senate race is one that has been closely watched by many political pundits due to its surprising close and competitive nature, despite being a state that President Trump won in the last election by over eight percentage points. Ohio is a state that has routinely been under close watch and scrutiny in previous elections, but has become increasingly more and more out of reach for national Democrats as they look to potential races. Specifically within the Ohio Senate race, right now, J.D. Vance, as the Republican, maintains less than a one-point advantage over Tim Ryan, the Democrat in what is expected to be potentially one of the closer races of this election cycle versus a year ago, where it was probably going to be one of the safest swing states for the Republican Party. For context in past elections, Ohio went to Rob Portman, the Democratic and Republican senator, actually, back in 2016, by a margin of 21 points. In 2010, the red wave year, Rob Portman won by 18 points. And in those elections, those were entirely expected margins. The states themselves and the polling numbers had shown Rob Portman with an exceptional lead over Ted Strickland, who started out actually as a governor from the state of Ohio, someone who had been a statewide elected position before. In fact, Ted Strickland, the Democratic nominee for Senate in the state of Ohio, defeated Governor Mike DeWine before he was governor in a previous election. Mike DeWine returned in 2018 and won the governorship, but for Ted Strickland to go from a point of being governor across the state to just garnering 37% of the vote is quite a significant falloff. This was a state that Democrats thought they would have a reasonable shot at victory, and for a brief period of time, they actually led in the polls in May and June and parts of July of 2016. But as it got closer to the election season, Ted Strickland and Rob Portman ended up moving away from each other in exceptional margins, and by the end of it, Ted Strickland and Rob Portman were in a race that was decided by 21 points in favor of the Republican Party. Again, in 2010, this was an entirely expected margin as well. The RCP average had Rob Portman ahead by 21 points. He ended up winning by about 18 points. The point here, the main takeaway, is that Rob Portman started out in 2010 as an electoral juggernaut, won his race very handedly. And it was entirely expected by the data that is telling us now that J.D. Vance is going to be in a very competitive race. This race would have been so easily winnable had Rob Portman just decided to stick around for another term. But he decided quite early on in this campaign season that he would not be running for re-election. And then Republicans assumed, because of the overwhelming margin of victory in 2010 and 2016, that it would not be winnable for the Democratic Party. And to an extent, they have been correct. To an extent, they have recognized that Ohio is very much out of reach for the Democratic Party, especially in the day and age of President Donald Trump. Knowing that Donald Trump won this state by eight points in both 2016 and 2020, being one of the very few states that actually did not shift practically at all away from the Republican Party, we can actually take a look here. Wonderful thing about this website, map.jacksonjude.com, would highly recommend it. But you can see that across the map, across the states, a lot more blue than there is red. If you compare 2016 versus 2012, you see a lot more red than you see blue. Ohio in specific swung over 11 points in favor of the Republican Party. When Obama won in 2008 versus 2004, a lot more blue across the country, Ohio itself swung by 7 points. Between 2012 and 2008, though, Ohio did swing by about 1.6%, but between 2016 and 2012, 11.1%. So in an election like 2020, where President Biden is flipping states such as Georgia and Arizona for the first time since the 1990s, Democrats are doing better than they ever have in 10 years in New Hampshire and you know, other states, you start to see a general trend here that benefited the Democratic Party. But Ohio only moved by 0.1%. Even states within a neighboring region, such as Pennsylvania, shifted by two. Michigan by three, Indiana by three, Wisconsin by one, Illinois, uh, sorry, Iowa by one, Minnesota by six, even states such as West Virginia by three, Kentucky by four. But Ohio? Ohio joined the ranks of New York, of Idaho, of California, Arkansas, Illinois, Nevada in very marginal shifts, some of which in favor of the Democratic Party, some of which in favor of the Republican Party. But it's far from impressive for the Democratic Party in terms of their showing. And that has held the Republican Party above water across all of these predictive maps. You can see that over time, the Republican Party has maintained a likely Republican characterization within the state of Ohio. That was until September. That was until we started to see real data out of the state of Ohio, not partisan polls, not internal pollsters, but rather partisan, uh, nonpartisan data, real data out of the state that was telling us, hey, this race is going to be competitive. 
and looking at the numbers, again, the same ones that predicted Rob Portman's exceptional victories in 2010 and 2016 are telling us now that this is a single digit race. To add additional context too about the state of Ohio, remind yourself that we are in a national environment where the president of the United States is a Democrat down by 10 points and the generic ballot is six points to the right of the nation from where it was in 2018 and about four points to the right of the nation of where it was back in 2020 based off of polling data alone, about five points actually. The Democrats leading by one point brings us back to 2016. I made a point of talking about this in yesterday's video because it is important to note bringing us back to 2016 is one of the worst things the Democratic Party could have if, and if is the big thing here, if their candidates were similar to where they were back in 2016. Ted Strickland was an unusually weak nominee, especially as someone who was a former statewide elected official. For periods of time, Ted Strickland thought he would have had a chance, and the 538 forecast did as well. In the early stages of the campaign season, Ted Strickland had about a 44% chance of victory. The margin of victory here was expected to be about 1.3%. By the end of the election, it was expected to be double digits, ended up being around 20%. But you can see here that by the time we reached the election, Rob Portman had a 98.5% chance of victory. That's significantly higher from where it was before at 42, 44% for the Democrats, and just 56% for the GOP. You've actually seen things move in an opposite direction, away from the Republican Party since the start of this forecast. The 2022 forecast had the Republicans at 90% on June 1st. Today, they're at 70%. This isn't to say Democrats will win the state of Ohio, but the fact that it's getting narrower as we head towards the election is quite alarming. For the additional context, what I wanted to point out was primarily that President Biden had a favorability rating net positive of seven points on Election Day and yet lost Ohio by eight points. The generic ballot on Election Day in 2020 was up by about seven points in favor of the Democratic Party, and yet Democrats lost the state of Ohio by eight points. The overall expected and final margin of victory on the national level 4.5%, 8 million votes between Biden and Trump, Ohio was still lost by 8 percentage points. Knowing that, recognizing that, the GOP should be in a position where Ohio should be safe. J.D. Vance should be performing the same way that Rob Portman did back in 2010. Because in 2004, we can see on the Senate level, it was pretty solid for the GOP. But then 2010 came in an open race. Rob Portman was not the incumbent and thus did not and was not treated as such by the electorate. Yet he still won by 18 points. When he became the incumbent, he expanded to a 21-point lead. But what Rob Portman showed was that you don't need incumbency. All you need is the ability to take advantage of the wave year. And yet J.D. Vance has just failed at that in more ways than one. It also helps on the Democratic side that Tim Ryan is someone who came from a swing district. He knows what it means to appease sides of the aisle. He knows what it means to win in close and competitive races. His race started out a safe Democrat in the earlier times in the 2010s, but his district has made a significant rightward trend that has made his competition much more sustainable and much more electable to a point where now, under the new maps, if we were to maintain the old ones, it probably would have flipped to the GOP. But the one person who was able to hold out was Tim Ryan. Now he's bringing that level of experience and campaigning to the statewide level. It also doesn't help that J.D. Vance is not someone who has served in political office prior to running for this political position. Point period, he's not someone who has proven himself electorally, and that is clearly negatively impacting the GOP's chances within the state of Ohio. I think by the end of this race, though, we will realize that this race was always going to go to J.D. Vance. At not one point in time did I ever have the state itself become a Democratic state on my map, but I do think the fact that it is becoming more competitive and the fact that Republicans have diverted $28 million at a bare minimum to this race means that there is money that could have gone elsewhere that probably would have changed the outcome of potentially a race that might go towards the Democratic Party. For instance, if Democrats win the state of Arizona by four points and I'm looking to the state of Ohio, I'm constantly reminded of, and I remind you guys of this so often, about how the Republican Party pulled out their funding from the state of Arizona quite literally pulled their funding out of the race. And when they pulled their funding out, they reallocated it elsewhere. And a lot of that money went towards the state of Ohio. Going towards the state of Ohio, you clearly see that because Ohio became more competitive, the GOP realized that they needed to focus on it. They are nervous that this race might not move in their favor because if it doesn't, forget the majority. They are losing seats. Forget Democrats maintaining 50-50. If Ohio's going blue, the Democrats are at least at 52. 
and it probably means they could potentially go to 53. And what I mean by that is, if you take our map right now, and you just take the states that are to the left of Ohio right now, and make them Democratic states, Pennsylvania becomes blue, New Hampshire becomes blue, Georgia becomes blue, Colorado becomes blue, Arizona becomes blue, Nevada does as well. Where does that put the Democrats without Ohio? It puts the Democrats at 51. What happens with the Democrats if they win Ohio? States that share a similar characterization could go as well. This is not a prediction. I feel like someone's going to screenshot this and put this on Twitter and say that this is my prediction, but it's not my prediction, right? This is just a hypothetical circumstance. But let's say, for instance, you know, this is what was to happen. Well, that would be very interesting, if you ask me. It would be fascinating, to say the least, but obviously that isn't what's going to happen. But if it does happen, if Ohio does shock the nation on that front, well, then it could potentially indicate that a year such as that was coming around the corner. That could have been a 2018 type of map rather than a 2022 one. But the fact that Ohio is even remotely competitive, much less, you know, lean Republican, means that the Democratic Party has done a lot right. The Republican Party has also done a lot wrong. Now, the RCP forecast right now, sorry, the 538 forecast has Ohio as a state that J.D. Vance is going to win. I've already told you that the expectations here are that J.D. Vance does win this race, and I don't think many people are contesting that. But Tim Ryan being at a third chance is quite higher than where Ted Strickland was back in 2016. Looking at the 2016 election as well, Donald Trump had about a 65% chance of victory in the state of Ohio. He ended up winning the state by about eight points. The popular vote margin was certainly off. The fact that Hillary Clinton at one point had a 77% chance of victory, I highly doubt that. But, you know, this is the polls only forecast. Polls Plus actually narrows up the race a bit more and makes it more competitive. The now cast was slightly better for Donald Trump, but really that was just uh, really not the best indicator at overall predicting the margin. But 64% is practically as high as Donald Trump had been throughout the entirety of the forecast season. So for him to actually win the state was pretty correct. But I will say, the forecasts are not always correct. I am reminded of 2020 when it said that Joe Biden had a 45% chance of victory within the state and that the popular vote margin of victory would be decided by less than a point. Well, it ended up being about eight points, and that was enough to tell me that sometimes these forecasts are quite off. The most that Donald Trump ever led Joe Biden on the forecast was when he had 51% of the vote to Joe Biden's 48%, a three-point margin of victory in what translated to eventually being an eight-point margin of victory. On one front, I see that as a failure on the side of the 538 forecast. On the other hand, I recognize that the data that we were working with and that 538 was working with also was quite unsubstantial. On some fronts, Ohio polling is correct. Again, remind yourself of 2016 and 2010. But in some cases, it's not. Fortunately for Tim Ryan and unfortunately for J.D. Vance, midterm election data in the state of Ohio has historically been at least somewhat accurate. It does overestimate Democratic support, which is thus my reasoning as to why I have J.D. Vance winning the state by a larger margin than what the polls might indicate. But they also are indicators in many cases and sometimes are spot on as to how Republicans are going to do across the state. Specifically within this class of Senate seat, with Rob Portman in the past two elections, polling numbers have been nearly perfect. So for them to be translated to where we are now, especially with data coming from Republican internals such as Trafalgar or Signal that are showing Vance ahead by two or at most five points, knowing that Donald Trump won this state by eight points, tells me everything I need to know. J.D. Vance, to recap, is more than likely going to win this election and has been the favorite from the very beginning. Ohio is not the state that it was back in 2012. When it voted for Obama by three points, the polling was extremely accurate, but it was absolutely a competitive state. In 2008, it went to Obama by five points, again, was absolutely a competitive state. But then came 2016. Then came Donald Trump's margin of victory that was larger than any other candidate in the 21st century in this state. And then he did it again in 2020. Ohio numbers sometimes underestimate Republicans specifically within this class of Senate seat, has been mildly accurate, but still an underestimation of Republicans when you're looking at the data. J.D. Vance is going to win this Senate race, at least as it stands right now. It will take a miracle for Tim Ryan to win. A miracle because a 30% chance probably isn't going to happen, and things are slightly getting better for the GOP as we head towards Election Day. Ohio in itself should never have been this competitive, and I think there have been significant ramifications of the fact that it even is competitive this election cycle. If Tim Ryan does go down and loses the Senate race, he will have saved Democrats in other Senate races. Well, that in itself is not a victory for Tim Ryan, it's a victory for National Democrats. If this race was with, was with Rob Portman, not a single penny 
would have been spent that could have been allocated elsewhere. It would have only been the Ohio Republican Party's own internal funding, and even then, it would not have been much. But since this race became competitive, it's not just Ohio we take a look at, but we look at the states where the funding was stripped from in order to fund Ohio, specifically Arizona, which ultimately might go to the Democrats by a very narrow amount, which meant that $28 million would likely have been better spent in Arizona, but the GOP was nervous. They were scared of Tim Ryan, and the polling data indicated that they should be. Maybe they know something that we don't. Maybe Ohio would be more competitive than we think. But as of right now, I'm sticking by my characterization of lean Republican for the state of Ohio. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. video. Make sure to comment down suggestions below. Subscribe on the left if you haven't already and check out the Instagram and Twitter. At the bottom left of the screen, there's also a Discord server for you to go ahead and join. On the screen, there's a video you can watch and then a playlist for my 2022 Senate election analysis videos. Again, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you all later today.